What does it take to become a multimillionaire? Do you need a doctor's salary? Do you need rich and famous parents? Do you need a fancy degree? Well, sure, these things can help, but you don't need these things to become a millionaire. In fact, I'll show you how a janitor living off of a janitor salary retired a multimillionaire. What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. Every single person wants to be a millionaire, but most people don't know where to start or what to do, and then we start to create these smoke screens, these excuses as to why we can't do it. We say, oh, I don't make enough money. Oh, I wasn't talented enough. Oh, I didn't have this God-given gift. Oh, I'm not one of those people that have a trust fund or these parents that were rich that gave their kids everything. I don't have the things or what it takes to become a millionaire because I wasn't fortunate enough to be given these things. Well, let me be honest with you for a second. Having all these fancy things, having rich parents, having a trust fund, having a fancy degree, having a big salary, all these things can help you become a millionaire or very financially successful, but you don't need these things to become financially successful or a millionaire. Ronald Reed was a janitor and a gas station attendant, and when he retired, he was a millionaire. Not just with one million dollars, but he was a multi-millionaire with eight million dollars. He wasn't given a trust fund. He didn't have all these fancy degrees or these super high paying jobs. He just knew what to do with the money that he earned. The reason why he was able to accumulate this multi-million dollar fortune was because of two things, his smart spending habits and his investing habits. That's it. It had nothing to do with the amount of money he made, it had nothing to do with what school or education he had, it had nothing to do with who his parents were. It came down to his spending and his investing. CNBC wrote an article on Ronald Reed talking about how he accumulated his wealth. And the thing that's really interesting about him and his story is he didn't even tell his family that he was wealthy. He was doing this all on the side. He made his money working as a janitor or working as a gas station attendant. And anytime he made some money, he was smart with his money. He spent it smartly and he invested it smartly. And then he just kept doing this. He kept investing his money his entire life. And then when he passed away, that's when his family, his kids, his grandkids, his relatives found out that Ronald Reed was a multimillionaire. His stepson actually gave an interview about Ronald Reed's wealth, and it was really interesting because what he said was, quote, he was tremendously surprised to find out that Ronald Reed was a multimillionaire, and he said that, quote, he was a hard worker, but I don't think anybody had an idea that he was a multimillionaire. That quality of building wealth quietly is so hard nowadays in our culture because we live in the social media culture. Before, it was keeping up with the Joneses because you saw your neighbors get a brand new car, so you wanted to get a brand new car. Your neighbors got a brand new boat, so you wanted to get a brand new boat. Now, it's the social media flex culture where you're following a whole bunch of random people and all these random people are broke, spending all their money on Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci belts that they can't afford and they're buying all these nice things and now you want to keep up. So now you're spending all your money going into debt just to keep up with all these random people on social media that you don't even know. That way you can get that double tap, that like on Instagram. But all these things are keeping you poor because what you're doing is you're making all these companies around you rich, but you're keeping yourself broke. Going back to this article, let's talk about Reed's spending habits because what it says is Reed maintained a frugal lifestyle where he never spent money unless he had to. What his friend said is that Ronald Reed drove a secondhand Toyota Yaris and he used to use safety pens to hold his coat together and he was the type of person that was cutting down his own firewood when he was 90 years old. Now I want you to imagine this for a second. Imagine that you have a bank account or an investment account with eight million dollars of cash sitting there and at the same time you're driving around in a used car. You could go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar supercar tomorrow with cash and you wouldn't even have to worry about the price. It wouldn't even make a dent into your bank account because spending a hundred thousand dollars when you have eight million dollars in your account is kind of like spending twelve hundred dollars assuming that you have a hundred thousand dollars in your account. So for him to go out and ball out and buy a brand new supercar wouldn't even affect him yet he's still driving a secondhand Toyota. That's dedication and know what you want and not spending money on things that you don't need. Now, my goal for you from a financial education perspective is not for you to just save all your money or just invest every single penny that you have. That way you never have the opportunity to buy the nice things and the luxury things that you want. I want you to be able to buy and afford the things that you want. The key word there is afford because I want you to have all the nice stuff, but you have to be able to afford it first. For Ronald Reed, these luxury things didn't matter to him. 
For him, he wanted just to keep building his wealth. That way he could create generational wealth and give back to the communities and the charities that he wanted to. But he knew what was important to him. And because he wasn't blowing his money in all this fancy stuff, he was able to build up this huge fortune. It kind of goes back to what sacrifice are you willing to make today? Because if you're willing to make that sacrifice today, if you're willing to sacrifice that car and the nice stuff today, that way you can put that money aside and put it to work today. Well, then this money that you're putting aside will be able to fund all the nice stuff that you want in the future. Ronald Reed neighbor went out to say that if he earned $50 that he would probably invest 40 of it. So he was investing the bulk of what he was making because that was what was important to him. He didn't want to blow all of his money on fancy stuff. He was investing it and that clearly worked to build his wealth. So now the question is how in the world do you actually take a janitor salary or a gas station worker salary and turn that into millions and millions of dollars especially when we're talking about somebody who did this over the last century because he died at 92 years old in the mid 2000 teens. It was 2014 when he passed away. So that means he was earning this money in the 1950s to the 2000s, early 2000s. And he took that money and turned that into a multi-million dollar fortune. How do you do that? Well, according to the article, he is a good stock picker and he had the control to hold onto his stocks for the long haul. So his financial strategy was pretty simple. He would earn money and this is money he earned as a janitor and a gas station worker then when he earned this money most of it would be invested and this would be invested into things that he knew and he understood and so these were stocks that he believed in and he held onto these stocks for the long term and we're talking about years if not decades and then if anything was left over this is what he spent and he spent on things he needed. So he spent little here, that way he could have more money to invest here because this is what made him wealthy. At this point, I already know what you're thinking. But Jaspreet, what's the point of me dying a millionaire and not being able to enjoy all this money that I would earn? Well, this is where you have to find the right balance for you. For him, Ronald Reed, he didn't really care about these things. So he just continued investing here because all he wanted was that generational wealth to take care of his family and he wanted to take care of the charities and the communities that mattered to him. So he kept investing here. For you, if you want to have the nice cars and nice clothes and nice vacations and all that, there's nothing wrong with that. But first, you got to stop spending all your money on things that you don't need right now. That way you have more money to put here. And once you start building this wealth, then hey, start spending money on the things that you want because now you can afford it because now you have the cash to do that. This super complex formula that Ronald Reed followed allowed him that when he died, he gave $1.2 million to his local library. He gave $4.8 million to his local hospital and he gave a couple million dollars back to his family. So now if we're analyzing different parts of this strategy, the funnel, he did not earn a lot of money. So if he wanted to improve this funnel, what can he do? Well, one thing you can do is you can earn more money. He was a janitor and he was a gas station attendant. If you want to earn more money, start a side hustle or you can go get a better job. You can get a promotion, whatever you got to do. Earn some more money. Now you have more money coming into the formula. We already talked about the investments. He invested the bulk of his income and we talked about where he invested it. You don't have to invest your money in stocks. You can invest your money in real estate and other places, but that's what he did. Then you can also talk about where he spent his money, right? We talked about how you don't want to just be blowing all your money on things right now because now you want to put this money towards your investments. So there's three different parts to this formula. One is earning money. Second is what you do with the money you earn and how much are you investing? How much are you spending? Financial education really doesn't have to be rocket science. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about how to manage your money and invest your money to build wealth, our team has an amazing guide on money management and investing that you can read for free that will walk you through how to manage your money and actually invest your money to build your wealth. So if you want to read this guide, it's completely free when you sign up for our daily newsletter. And I'll put the link to where you can download this guide in the description below. The one key thing that really allowed this process to work though is in this this part right here because not only did he just put his money into the stock market the thing that allowed him to actually make money and build this wealth in the stock market was he kept his money in the market for years and decades because that real wealth happens over time because when you're investing your money in the stock market or really any asset class for that matter but we'll focus on the stock market here when you're investing your money in the market what you're trying to do is you're trying to invest in companies that you believe in 
And these companies take time to really grow and create new products and develop their revenue and the profit. And then for that price, the new profit to be shown in the stock price. And so this takes time to happen. And that's what he allowed himself to do by investing his money into the market, consistently doing that and letting his money compound and grow. Because what happens to a lot of people, especially nowadays, because of these new brokers and this new kind of age where everyone's trying to make 100% returns in a week, what's happening is people want to see these returns almost overnight. We want to get rich quick. I mean, it's natural. Who doesn't want to get rich quick? Who wants to get rich slowly? The reality is if you want to get rich, one of the most consistent and proven ways to do that is through long-term sustainable investing. And that's exactly what he did. And so what you want to do is you got to believe in these companies. And even when things start to go down, if you believe in your companies, you should not be selling. The only thing that you should be doing is coming in and buying more. Going back to the CNBC article, because there was one more part that I thought was really interesting. He gave $1.2 million to his local library, the Brooks Memorial Hospital. And the interesting thing about what the library did is they didn't just take all this money and spend it in the library. What they did instead was they invested the money. They said they invested the bulk of their money, the donation that they got. That way it will continue to pay dividends and support us down the road. When you go out and you work and you earn money, this money pays you once because this is now money that you have in your hand. And if you spend that money, this money is gone. But if you take this money and you put it in your investments and these investments pay you every single year. Well, now you have money coming back every single year and this will continue to happen as long as you own the right investments. And so now you have money to blow every single year because this is cash flow coming in from your investments. And that's what the library is doing. I'm glad they did that with their money because now this asset is going to pay them for years into the future. And now this is money that they can use to improve the library for years and years and years. Your salary will never make you wealthy. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care if you're making half a million dollars a year or if you're making $20,000 a year. Your salary cannot make you wealthy because as soon as you stop going to work, your money's gonna stop coming in. And if your money's not coming in, how are you gonna pay your bills? How are you gonna afford your vacations? How are you gonna afford your cars? How are you gonna afford to eat and live your life? Because if you're not working, now you're not getting paid. And sure, maybe you got some savings, but your savings work the same way. Even if you have a million dollars in your savings account sitting there, well, every time you spend a dollar, your savings are gonna shrink and shrink and shrink. And eventually, if you live long enough, and you hope that you live long enough, your savings are just gonna dry up and they're gonna go away. So you can't outsave your way into wealth. What you need to do if you wanna become wealthy is you have to have these investments because these investments will continue to pay you even when you're not physically working. This money that you're earning from your job, your earned income, has to be invested. You need to be investing as much as possible because this is what is going to make you wealthy. You cannot become wealthy by earning more money. You cannot become wealthy by spending all your money. The only way you can become wealthy, and when I talk about wealthy, is being able to buy back your time, is if you have investments because these investments will pay you even when you're not physically working. This is where now you can jump into different investing strategies and different investing goals and how you can amplify your investments by earning more money and spending less money. But the whole the whole premise of any of this is you have to have the right financial education, which means you have to be investing your money the right way. That way now you're using your money as a tool to make your money instead of using your money as a tool to make everybody else around you rich. Because when you're spending all your money, you're making everybody else rich, but you're keeping yourself broke. So what am I trying to get at with all of this? Well, if you want to become wealthy, what it comes down to is how you use your money. It is the financial education that you have more than it is just how much money you earn, what job you have, or anything else. It's what you do with the money you earn. That's why we've said multiple times on this channel that it's not just how much money you make that matters, it's what you do with the money you make. Once you know how to spend your money and invest your money the right way, now if you earn more money, you're gonna earn more money in the most valuable way possible because you'll know how to use this money the right way. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on things you need to know if you wanna become wealthy. And while you're at it, download our free money management PDF. And as always, keep hustling. But you don't get to own a physical franchise. You don't own a building. You don't own any burgers. You own just a piece of the McDonald's company. And so you own their stock on paper. The advantage of this is it is very accessible.